Welcome back to Pacific Drive. I want to explore up north here in the outer zone. Before that, I want to do something real fast, though. A while ago, we were in E3, and while I was heading to the exit, out racing the storm, I saw a purple triangle on the map. It was unidentified, so I've never encountered anything of that type. I want to know what it was, so I'll bring you back when I'm there. Hold on, we got some interesting stuff happening. Malfunctioning mess is the junction condition. High levels of magnetic interference combined with broad spectrum atmospheric anomalies mean that things are constantly going haywire in this part of the zone. Okay, cool. Yeah, the other interesting thing is um, this is not the E3, this is the one before it. There's two power sources and there's also a relay tower? Was that there before? Like, does this game have randomization? I don't know. Let's grab it real fast. ago in November of 1946, Dr. Ophelia Turner was 27. She had recently returned home to the Olympic Peninsula to lick her wounds after a failed stint in academia. In a fit of obsession or redemption or, quite frankly, both, she cobbled together a laboratory in her basement and produced the first limb wave on nothing but a killer hunch and plain ingenuity. Or so the story goes. It's never clearly stated anywhere what limb waves and limb technology really were. It's all vague claims and wild theories, dreams that border more on the mystical than the scientific. What we do know is that limb stood for unlimited frequency. Radio waves, once souped up and modulated just right, supposedly enabled the control of matter in a way that modern science both back then and now could only dream of. After Dr. Turner's discovery, she and a few friends, scientists and PhDs all, toyed with Lim in their garage labs for about four years. The local police and fire departments start making regular house calls, spurred on by increasingly disgruntled neighbors calling in about incidents that seem to grow larger and more disturbing as the years go on. After one too many reports, the federal government takes notice, and thus begins their severe interest in Lim technology. The next part happens quickly. In 1955, the United States government seizes not only the physical area where Dr. Turner and her scientists live, but the entire concept of limb technology. The area is at first evacuated under the pretense of safety, but quickly commandeered by the government. They establish a brand new department called ARDA, Advanced Resonance Development Authority, which was to be headed by Dr. Turner herself. Over the next 15 years, the government expands the zone's borders. They clear out civilians as they go and erect massive 500-meter walls to keep out an increasingly curious public. The zone started in the northernmost tip of the peninsula, then expanded outward twice. Once in 1961, again in 1967, to the outer perimeter we see now. Yeah, it's interesting the way that the zone expands, it doesn't happen gradually, so it's not just like something that's continuously growing. Something preceded it, its growth, and then it just suddenly expanded. Okay, things just got interesting. So E3 does not have the purple triangle anymore, and in fact, I don't think the level is even the same as it was before. So I think the zone instability maybe means that places change? I don't think there's any point in coming back to a place to get things you missed. I think it'll be a new place by then. But I just left E3. There were no gateways in E3 that I could take to get back home. And it won't let me even go back or like cancel out of this leave the level dialogue. So I can't go back to E3. I also can't go back to E4, which I came from previously. So I think literally the only thing I can do, aside from loading my game, is to go to F3. It's the only other place that connects to this. And F3 has high instability. I thought you couldn't even go to those places, but apparently you can. I can just travel there. They just advise against it. We're about to find out just how highly unstable high instability is. It has shocking speed, which we've encountered before, but it also has the gravity of this situation and swift storm, which we have not encountered. This should be interesting. I am definitely going to need to not dawdle. I'm not going to gather any energy. 
I don't think I'm going to get anything unless there's a purple triangle. If there's a purple triangle, I'll probably get it. Otherwise, we got to get the hell out of here. And then we'll head to one of these places we haven't explored. But yeah, let's um, let's go see. So Swift Storm is pretty self-explanatory. The storm will come for me quite fast, so I can't stay there long. The gravity of the situation makes it look like my car is going to go flying up in the air all the time because there's going to be gravity spikes. All right, what do we got? Oh, this is quite small, actually. Uh, I do want that. Let's just go. It's not a purple triangle, but it is a message. Woohoo! Oh, that's fun. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no! Fuck! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Do I even have the stuff to make what I need? Ceiling kit. Yeah, this one's popped. I think I need a little bit of repairing because we have some things that are like red. Oh yeah, that's in the red. Oh, I've never scanned that apparently. Anything else that's like pretty much dead? Yeah, everything on the front of my car takes the brunt of it. All right, good enough. This will make me float. That's fine. Nice and gentle. Oh, it's not too gentle. Oh, I just got an achievement. While driving, remain airborne for six seconds. Oh, that's a cur cursed place to have a little airborne thing. There's the storm warning. Multi-stage evacuation of the Olympic Peninsula's 100,000 strong population. The records get sketchy. Once the region is swept clean of civilian eyes, the flow of information trickles to an eventual stop. Arda has always maintained that the evacuation was done in the name of national security. That there was simply nothing more patriotic than sacrificing your homes, with the communists plotting our demise across the Atlantic. Certainly not because there was any danger from the strange experiments happening inside, or situations most unnatural to witness. Arda kept a wide berth, displacing citizens far ahead of the front line, so first-hand accounts of things going awry were rare. Screw it, I'm gonna get this. And everyone had some story about a distant relative whose pet changed in inexplicable ways, or a friend of a friend who followed strange lights into the woods and never returned. Once the civilians cleared out, the Arda employees moved in. Scientists, officials, support staff, and their families made the Olympic Exclusion Zone home, reaching anywhere from 300 to 1,000 in total at its peak. What any of them were doing in the zone was kept hush-hush, but the population just outside the walls found the secrecy irresistible. Every shipment of raw material, out-of-season weather pattern, an inexplicable light or sound became the talk of the town for the first decade of the zone's existence. That boost was actually helpful.
Man, I'm glad I put on all those whoa, insulated parts. I get electrocuted a lot. Okay, so extreme conditions are pretty extreme, but they are manageable. In this swift storm, it seems like the storm starts quite swift, but it doesn't move any faster once it's started. So I don't think I actually need to race. You can't dawdle, for sure, but I don't need to literally race to the end. Okay. Oh, my right headlight is apparently bad. What's head? Here. I'm guessing that's the most, most north in the outer zone you can go. Seems like it's pretty much at the top of the map. Rest stop, residential, damp forest, outer zone. Oh. Nope. Anchor obfuscation. And... Something else. So anchor obfuscation. Increased magnetic interference means that anchor signatures in this part of the zone are indistinct. It will be harder to precisely locate them. Well, I don't see any special symbols on the map, so I don't think there's anything of particular interest here. Let's just leave, I guess. New facts. Tardigrade count out of control. We're well past 500 TPM. They're self-aware. They've created a society. We can't contain them. Is that 500 tardigrades per million? There's one more point north I'd like to explore, but it has high instability. So let's work our way towards the crack in the wall. We need to get here. Let's go to E7 first. There was nothing there. So now we're at our real destination. G1... Back roads, remote, blistering woods. Shocking speed is the condition. Got a couple power sources. Now this intrigues me. The X means it's a structure. Just generic structure, which means it's something special. It's not a house or an Arda facility thing. It's something unique. Plus it's just out in the middle of nowhere. It seems to be at the base this all goes down, right? Yeah, it's like at one of the lowest levels of this this valley that we're in. Okay. Well. Let's get the power sources first. Nice. Oh no, we have another cork. The old... Actually, why is the cork coming back? Like the exact same one. When you go into reverse, the freaking hood pops up. I think that's the third time I've had it. And then we still have a cork with the radio shutting off, and I don't even know what activates that. That doesn't just shut off, but it also switches station and just goes all over the place. Oh, boy. Ho, ho, ho. It's the first time I've been on my side like that. I wonder if it's possible to flip completely over and be stuck. Hi there. Having fun on that tree? Oh boy. Oh, a bolt bunny. It's a different type of bunny. Oh, I wonder if you dropped something unique. No, 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 it's mine. It's mine. Don't touch it. It drops plasma. That's unique. Other than that, just scrap metal. Oh no, you're gonna grab my car, aren't you? My defenses that work against bunnies also work against those, though. Can't touch me.
I think it's still trying to grab that bunny in the tree. <laughs> May I return to the road, please? Here we go. And after this, we're going to head into the woods. the radio what triggers it i need to know to diagnose it this is triggering it a lot oh my god jesus oh shit i think our engine's smoking is it when i hit something I just did it there. Is it when I reverse as well? Reverse again. Oh my god, I think it's when I reverse. Or it's like when I change direction or something. It just happened there. Wait. Is it when I hit the gas, it toggles? And then when I release it, it toggles again? Gas? Stop. Gas? Gas? Stop. Okay, I don't get it. Is it when I turn? <laughs> what is it? Oh my god. Let's stop. I'm gonna turn. No. Has something to do with acceleration or speed or direction changing. Oh, the engine's busted fix mechanics kit. I think I have one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> clink, clink. Done. That hood is not looking good. Don't want it to fall off. I'll take care of anything red. Good enough.
Secrets? Really? That's it? For being out in the middle of nowhere? I thought I'd have something special. Okay, then. All right, let's try to find this quirk. So I'm gonna say if the car moves slow, the radio toggles. Three of four correct. Okay, so it's the moves slow part that's wrong. Moves backwards? No. Oh, it might be the moves uphill or moves downhill. Let's try moves uphill. Yes! That was it! <laughs> well, that's really satisfying. That is so incredibly specific. Moves uphill. Oh, we have a fax, by the way. I'm still alive. I'm just in here now. I'm just in here now. Tell someone. This area should take us to the crack in the wall, but there's high instability, so let's explore the area around it. I want to go here. Let's go to G8 first. I'll let you know if I find anything interesting. New facts. Meeting minutes, November 18th, 1949. Agenda. How best to classify and store SRR equipment and journals. Suitable social clubs for meetings. That will not exclude Dr. Ophelia Turner. Arising concerns, the SRR lacks formal structure. Country club academies, golf venues, etc. off limits to Dr. Ophelia Turner. Action items. Dr. Ophelia Turner shall be responsible for storing and maintaining SRR equipment. Dr. Reginald Stanley Robinson shall be responsible for minute taking and record keeping. AOB. Local cider tasting courtesy of Dr. Henry F. W. Mulligan. Arriving at the unexplored place, G7, Welcome Center, Blistering Woods, Outer Zone. What do we got? Things are quite spread out. Oh, there is a lot of power sources. Six. facts September 20th 1966 after the summer's exponential increase in seismic activity geologists now believe we may be witnessing the formation of a new volcano or even a chain of volcanoes across the Olympic Peninsula it's still unknown what's behind this unprecedented 
There's help in there. Wow. So the strange readings coming out of the zone were so strong that made people think that there might actually be volcanoes forming. Installing an investigator module kit. That's going to make it so our tinker station will tell us exactly which of our guesses is right if we don't guess all of the ones correctly. So instead of just the number of ones that are correct, it tells you exactly which ones are correct. I want to head here, and it seems like everywhere that leads me there has high instability. So you know what? Fine. <laughs> We're going into high instability. Oh, wait a second. This place is unstable. The energy source looks red. Is this how you get unstable energy? I had never considered that. I assumed it would come from the middle zone. I didn't realize it would just come from any place that's unstable. Oh, this stuff is extremely valuable. I don't have any of it, and I need it for all sorts of crafting things. Of course, being unstable, the storm is coming, but I really, really, really want the other energy source. All this time I should have been heading towards high anomaly places. They're not as scary as they seem. I mean, they're a little bit scary. Bye bye. Okay, we gotta get the hell out of here. Oh, God. How is my bumper still attached? I'm not sure if anyone's attached to me, but they aren't now if they were. It's all downhill from here, so we should make it easily. Don't hit the speed ups, I don't need more speed. Now we can go where I wanted to go. Midnight Forest. Oh wow, it is dark. Yeah, we have eerie darkness. This part of the zone is unusually even abnormally darker than normal. Oh, look at that bat with a smiley face. That's a nice bat. Oh, it's quite short. Three power sources. I suppose it's all going to be stable energy. I really don't need stable energy. Wait. How do I leave? Oh, right. I guess no gateway is showing the map because I don't have enough energy? because I don't have any stable energy. Okay, so I need to pick up some of these energy sources.
Oh, looks like now we have enough to get out of here. Well, you can't miss it now with the extreme darkness. I think I hit a bunch of tourists. Is that, is that what they're called? The mannequins? Yeah, I think that wrecked my car. All right, so we have 2.3 unstable energy. It's not much. Have a nice field trip. But I might be able to craft a recipe. New facts. The roads will take you home, Henry. The roads will take you home. Listen to me. You know how this place mixes everything up? You see how it doesn't mix up the roads. That's the key. Forget about where the buildings, the trees, or the landmarks are. Stick to the roads. I spent the unstable energy on a plasma scrapper. Upgraded version of the normal scrapper. Has more durability. Does more scrapping damage. I wonder if it also perhaps gives you more scrap from the things you scrap. I don't know. Oh, look at this. Looks very different. Oh, whoa, that's cool. It's kind of weird how it floats around, so when you move it does this. That's weird, but I'll get used to it. But oh man, that looks incredibly cool. Also spent some more unstable energy on a crude flashlight. So let's see how this compares to the relightable flare. Relightable flare. Crude flashlight. Oh. The light is brighter. And it goes much wider. Yeah, it goes further and wider. That's, that's way better. And it actually sounds and looks like a flashlight. I think it'll last something like three times as long. Yeah, these have 2,300 durability. This has 6,000. So about three times the durability. That is fantastic. Oh, by the way, I got a flare gun. I didn't craft it. I don't even think I've researched it, but I just found it. Each one has, I think, four shots. It's satisfying. I like the way it smokes the barrel. Yeah, hey, I didn't even consider shooting it up, which I think is what you're supposed to do with a flare gun. But it seems like if it's on the ground, it doesn't really light up that much. But if you shoot it up, it lights up the whole area. Really, not for long, though. Like, what, 10 seconds? Yeah. Cool device, but... Oh, hey. So it drops a road flare when it's done. <laughs> That's cool. It's a cool device, but I don't think I really have any use for it now that I have the crude flashlight, especially. I want to see them drop. <laughs> Alright, well, I think I'm going to end the episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we are finally going to head to the expansion wall.